Thank you for tuning in to another podcast of the Prodigal Son. You know, every day on this podcast, I pray these prayers for you. They, they're Paul's prayers for the Ephesians, but I've adopted them for every person that walks the face of this earth, that the eyes of your understanding would be opened to his love, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness, and that your eyes would be opened to the fact that God is for you not against you. He's not out to get you, but he's out to love you and bless you if you'll allow him to. Ephesians, the first chapter in the 15th verse, it says, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believed him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Those are my prayers for each and every person that walks the face of this earth. I thank God today that he has opened my eyes to his love, his mercy, his grace, and his goodness. That he, that he has opened my eyes that he is for me, not against me. And that is my prayers for you today. Glory to God in the highest. Now let's see what God, God's word has to say today. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. Father, I just praise you for all that you are doing in this podcast. I praise you for the truth in your word, God, that we can stand on it. Oh, that I can stand on your goodness and your grace, your mercy, and the truth that you have given me in your word. God and direct God in everything that's said and done today. I'll give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'm going to be taking my scriptures today out of Psalm 119 and 130. I put that in the notes yesterday, and and I just want to remind you that I put these notes in this podcast in the, the note section or the description of this podcast for a reason, and that is to provoke you to study these these scriptures for yourself to give you reference points of what i'm saying in this in this podcast to let you know that that what is being said in this podcast comes directly from from the word of god and that you can go and study it for yourself and and know the truth and the truth will set you free. That, that thrills me to be able to do that. It thrills me to be able to, to give you what God has given me through His Word and through the Holy Spirit's guidance 
through his word. Glory to God. The 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 hundred and thirtieth verse of the hundred and nineteenth Psalm, that's Psalm one nineteen, one thirty. It says this the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. And and I'm gonna read that in the, the King or the New Living Translation. It says the teaching of thy word gives light, so that even the simple can understand. You know, this this word that God has given us is I've said it before, it's a it's a manual. It's an instruction manual to life. And and you talking about enlightening things, enlightening things in your life. God's word brings enlightenment. And shine if you'll shine the light of God's word into your life, you'll see things that you've never ever seen before. Ask me how I know. I've I've saw I've saw, you know, the the, the old saying goes, hindsight is twenty twenty. And you can look back over your life and you know, I've looked back over my life a lot of times and thought, why? Did I do what I done? Or why did that turn out the way it did? And why do do I feel the way I do in a certain circumstance or certain thing that goes on in my life? And and I hadn't seen this before, so hindsight isn't 2020. Yeah, you can look back at your life and realize, you know, where you took the wrong turn, but a lot of times you don't see that wrong turn. A lot of times you'll never see that wrong turn. You have to be enlightened. And that's where God's Word comes in. Because when you start, there, there's, there's certain circumstance in my life I never knew why that I felt the way I did. Until I come to understand what God's word said and, and, and the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to things that I'd never seen before. I never understood why I felt so condemned and so, so, uh, shamed on things and, and that on certain things in my life, just being completely deceived into being that way. Over, certain, or over things that I hadn't done, that I hadn't, I, hadn't, I hadn't committed the things that I had been accused of. I hadn't done anything to be accused of what I had been, been accused of. I had a person in my life that had shamed me the biggest part of my life, condemned me and, and, and give me down the road for for something I did not do, I guess for just being part of the the of their circle, and and I had been deceived into seeing or thinking that I was guilty of that when when I wasn't, I wasn't guilty of what I was being accused of, and God showed me that through His Word, the enlightenment. Of his word. His light will bring light into dark places in your life that you can't see to get around in. He'll open your eyes to things that have condemned you and shamed you your entire life. And you'll be surprised, very surprised, at what he shows you about the things that goes on in your life. Now, I'm not saying you're innocent. I'm not saying that I was innocent in everything that I've ever done in my lifetime. I've made a lot of mistakes. But in this instance that I'm talking about, I had done nothing wrong. I had went, I went, I had went over and above the call of duty to do ex- just to, to, to give this person as much respect and love as I could. And it was not good enough. I found that out. And that person couldn't be pleased. And for for my entire adult life, I had a picture of God being that unpleasable, that 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 unpleasable. That, you know, I've talked about it before. You know, you've met people that just cannot be pleased, refused 
refuse to get along with anybody, refuse to be pleased with anything they have. And this person that I'm talking about refused, still to this day refuses, to, to give me any, any kind of credit for anything. It's always condemnation and shame. And aren't you ashamed of what you have done? When I found out what they were holding against me for all these years, I also found out that I done all that I could do to give them more time than I gave the other person they were jealous of. It was, it was so, it's such a sad situation. A sad situation. But God told me in no uncertain terms that this is not your fault. People, I'm going to tell you something. God is far easier to please than man will ever be. It, I, I held, I held, what I, I the, the shame and the condemnation that I received from this person in my lifetime, I looked at God that way, that he was unpleasable. And through the truth and the enlightenment, the light, the entrance of God's word brings light. And when God shined that light into my life and I realized that he wasn't human, he wasn't some unreasonable human being that refused to love you, that refused to love me, and, and, and wanted to torment me in, in, in every aspect of life. I mean, I, to this day, I can't do anything to please this person. I can't do anything to please them. But yet I love them with all my heart. But why is that? I, I'm going to be honest with you. If it wasn't for God himself putting the love that he has put in my heart for people, I'd hate this person. I couldn't help it if I was carnally minded. But, I, but God has given me a love for them that, that I can't explain. A pity uh, uh, compassion for the state of mind that they're in because they don't see what I see. They don't understand that Satan is using them trying to distract me. And glory to God, I can stand with both my hands held high and say Satan hadn't distracted me from anything. I told my pastor, I said, Pastor, the, the devil has sent his best soldier into my life to do his best to distract me, and I ain't allowing it to happen. I will not allow distraction to come from Satan. And I will love this person till they take their last breath. And I will love them for the rest of my life. Because God has given me that love and that compassion, that pity that they need. And he showed me yesterday that kindness is what's going to change them. My kindness, my love and compassion that God has given me for them. And you know, that's what, that's what this message is all about. For you to find light in those dark places in your life. You know, I, this, this podcast is, uh, I don't feel like there's anything out there like it. Why? Because I'm just Stacy. I can't put on any airs and make you feel like that, that I'm any better than any person that walks the face of this earth. Maybe a little bit more ob obedient. Maybe a little bit more uh, apt to believe but I want to I want to teach you and provoke you to be the same. I want to teach you and provoke you to 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 find out what God wants to enlighten in your life. 
what God wants to, to show you in your life. That you can take the people that come against you. And I, I'm, I'm satisfied that, that, that God is just allowing this to go on in my life. Because it does nothing but make me understand that there's a lot of unreasonable people out here in this world that I can be a light to. And when persecution comes, as the Bible says it will, on Christian, on Christian people, when persecution comes, I can find the love of God in my heart to love those people regardless. Regardless of what they do to me. I told somebody else in my life one time, and they were just, oh, they were giving me a hard time just over and over and over again. And I said, I'm going to love you regardless of what you do or say. I'm going to love you. There ain't nothing that you can do or say in this lifetime that will make me not love you. And they melted like hot butter. There was nothing they, they could say. There, is, there was nothing that they could say. They, they have, have, have just went out of their way to give me a hard time. And God has given me that love in my heart. Now, I couldn't have found that love out here in this world. I didn't have that love out here in this world. I had no, no such a thing out here in this world. God gave me that love. He gave me that mercy, that grace, and that goodness. Oh, I thank God for that. I praise Him for the enlightenment that He has sent into my life through His Word. If you'll put His Word into your heart and life, and, and, and allow him to speak to you. I want to read something. And this is a, a big part of success in life. And that is praying in the Holy Spirit. It's in Jude. Jude's only got one chapter. It's in Jude, the 20, 20th verse. It says, be ye be, And be ye beloved... Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, allowing the Holy Ghost to influence you to pray and be guided by Him. Be filled with Him, baptized in the Holy Ghost, praying, praying that He might pray through you. And, and make you understand or may, may allow you to realize that he can build you up. Jude, the 20th chapter. You know, I, I heard a man talk about this one time. He told me, he said, he said, yeah, they, they want to, there's, there's a scripture in the Bible talking about uh, praying in the Holy Spirit edifies, edifies a uh, man. Well, what does that mean, edifies? It means to build up. To build up your spirit. And, and this verse says, Be ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you what, when you don't know what to pray, the Holy Ghost does. And if you'll allow Him to, to pray through you, and allow Him to, that you can come to, come to the conclusion that if you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit... And allow him to pray you, pray through you in other tongues, and allow how allow the Holy Spirit to pray through your spirit, and for it to come out your mouth and and pray. God God knows what you need to pray. The Holy Spirit knows what you need to pray. And and I'm not going to get into teaching this, but because that is not my that is not my realm of teaching. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm no stronger in life in when, than when I pray in the Holy Spirit and I dig through God's Word and be filled with His Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me as I pray. 
I promise you, you won't find you won't find any any stronger days in your life is when you can get down to business and realize what God wants to say through you when you pray. Allow the Holy Spirit to strengthen you, to build up, to build up yourself in your most holy faith. I wasn't planning on saying anything about that, but it just, the Lord expect, or prompted me to say something. Because if you want to be built to be strong in Him, you get into His Word, and you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you through His Word, and to be, to be, to be fed by His Word. And then when you pray, you ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, baptize me, fill me, with your with your words give me the words to say that I might pray in you and allow you to pray through me that I might pray in other tongues allowing the holy spirit to pray through me and i promise you strength will come strength will come that's the enlightenment that god's word will bring into your life if you'll allow him to that's the enlightenment, the strength, and the and it's like walking into a dark room with a lantern that shines on all sides. And when it when you walk into the room, it lights up the whole place. That's what God's word will do for your life if you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you through it, to, to give you what you need to be strong in Him, to strengthen your inner man. You may say, well, I don't know what, where to even start. Well, being born again is where you need to start. Romans 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's salvation in a nutshell. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Believe on what he said. And he said that he raised Christ from the dead to justify you. Believe that. Confess Jesus as Lord of your life. Be born again today. And then get in God's word and feed your spirit, your inner man. And ask the Holy Spirit to, to baptize you, to, to strengthen you, to give you the realization of what God wants in your life. To come into your life and, and pray through you. And be strengthened by that. Now, that's not, that's not the, only, the only gift of tongues. The gift is other tongues of, of speaking out a, a, a message in tongues and somebody else interpreting it. I'm not getting any, into any of that. I'm just telling you what I have come to the conclusion and understanding that if I pray in the Holy Ghost, and, and that, that that will strengthen me. It will edify me. It will strengthen my inner man that I can stand up and be strong in him. Be strong in Him, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and His Holy Spirit that dwells within me. Come to that conclusion. Be born again today. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you, that you might be, be strengthened through God's Word and through His Spirit. God wants you to understand that. He wants you to know that. And He wants you to be just as strong as you will allow yourself to be. He'll make you just as strong as you'll allow yourself to be. Glory to God. It thrills me to understand that and come to that conclusion. Be filled today with the Holy Spirit. Allow God's Word to enlighten you, strengthen you, and edify you. That means to strengthen, to build up, to build up. I'm going to read it one more time. Psalm 119, 130. If I can get back to it right quick. 119 and 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. And then Jude. What does it say? Jude. That's the, 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 this, is, this is the word now. It be ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. 
Allow the Holy Spirit to, to pray through you. Allow the Holy Spirit to baptize you and, and that you might pray in other tongues and strengthen your inner man. Come to strengthen that inner man. That inner man that's born again and wants to wants to in, influence your life in every step that you take. And, and God deals with that inner man. Allow God to deal with you today. If you've never been born again, confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Be born again. And then allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you through His Word, through every, through every chapter and verse in His Holy Word. Glory to God. Come to know Jesus Christ today. Make Him Lord of your life and allow Him to change your life forever. Glory to God. If you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. You know, I wasn't planning on saying anything about the praying in the Spirit, but the Lord prompted me to that. You know why? Because I have found out over the years that that, that is strength that I can't muster up in my own self. But oh, how much strength comes when I allow the Holy Spirit to pray through me. Oh, come to that conclusion. Come to know that. Come to understand that there is strength in Him. If you've been born again today, oh, if if you've been born again through this podcast, go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. We want to hear what God is doing in your life. We want to hear what, what you want Him to do in your life. If you need to be filled with the Spirit, get in touch with us. We want to guide you and direct you in that path. If you need strength in your life, we want to pray for you. We want to pray according to God's Word, agree with you according to God's Word. Glory to God. I thank God for the people that are being born again, being strengthened, being being strong in their Christian life through the truth in God's Word. Partners, I want to thank you for all that you do for this ministry. All the finances that you sow into this ministry, I thank you. I pray God's blessing, a hundredfold return according to Mark 10, 29, and 30. On what you sow into this ministry, what you are sowing into the kingdom of God to see people not only born again, but freed, set free from the bonds of religion. Set free from from what man has done to control other people, but but turned loose and and enlightened by the light of God's word. That's what we we strive to do today is to seek seek God's word for wisdom for every person that listens to this podcast. Go to our website. Get in touch with us, partners. I thank you. For that, for allowing God to guide you and direct you to sow your finances into this ministry, to see God's word go out all over this world and, and to strengthen people, to see people born into the family of God. And you've got a part of that. You got a part of that. If you want to become a partner uh, for, with, the, with this ministry, go to our website. We've got a place on there, has an address to mail. Anything that you want to mail in or it has a, a, a link that you can pay through PayPal and become a partner with the prodigal son to send God's word out, to send his word out, to see God's word change people's lives. Good night, boy, it has changed mine. And I know there's multitude, millions of others out there that God's word has changed their life. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.